Hi everyone, I am Allison, and today I wanted to talk about my Chica sweater pattern, which I have knit two and a half times so far. This is a sweater pattern by Knit Cafe Midori. It is not their most famous one. They are like beyond well known for the ranunculus pattern. It's something that I feel like every knitter has knit at some point in time, and I will be knitting it maybe in 2022. I have quite a lot on the needles at the moment. We're like mid-November and I have a couple of gifts that I want to get done before the holiday season. So it's definitely not going to happen anytime soon, but maybe next year. This is the Chica sweater pattern and I have knit it once. I have knit it twice. I have knit it almost for the third time. I have my third on the needles now. Let's see if I can very carefully get this out of here. Obviously, you can tell I like my solid colors. And because I feel like I know this pattern really well at this point, I thought that I could do a little bit of a review video and talk about the pattern completely not modded or like the world's tiniest modification on my first version, my second version, which is pretty heavily modded, and then my third version, which just goes off the rails, basically only follows like the neckline portion and just I'm winging it from the rest of it. So let's talk about sizes. This only has three sizes, which is not very good in like the grand scheme of size inclusivity. They have an extra small to medium, a large to extra large, and a 2XL to 3XL, which is kind of a pet peeve of mine. Those variations between an extra small and a medium are pretty significant. And then again, from like a large to an extra large, a 2XL to a 3XL, just kind of like calling a size to fit all of those different like variations and body types is, I don't know, it doesn't like sit super well with me, but it is a very like dramatically oversized, sorry, I shouldn't say that because it is um, oversized on the models that they show wearing it. So I think it's usually the same models for a lot of the Knit Cafe Midori, um, for a lot of their patterns, they use like the same models, or at least it, it appears to be the same models who are very, very small and young looking, and they have a ton of ease when they are wearing these patterns. So it's very much oversized on smaller bodies. According to the schematic, the smallest size should have a body circumference of 54 inches, which is 137 centimeters. The um, middle size, which is the large to extra large, is 58 and 3 quarters inches or 149 centimeters. And the largest size is 63 inches or 160 centimeters. So certainly if you are a smaller person, you're going to get a ton of ease in the smallest size. And for larger bodies, it can go up to that 63 inches, but I know that um, there's been a more movement to go beyond like the 60 inch body size. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. So for all of these patterns, I did start with the smallest size. So that is the extra small to a medium. And that's what I used as the basis for all three of the sweaters that I'm working on. The one thing that I will say that I do really like is that they give you very specific instructions for different types of sleeves. So you can do a short like cap sleeve, you can do a long sleeve with tight arms, a long sleeve with loose arms. I think there's instructions for a three quarter sleeve as well. And obviously for like any pattern, you can just do that. Like you can stop knitting the sleeve when you want it to stop, like that's allowed, but they give you the instructions for that. So I do think that it's nice that they give you all of these different customizable options for the sleeves. So let us dig in to what I did with my very first Chica sweater. So this was actually the second sweater I ever knit, which was extremely ambitious of me. I'm not going to like dig too far deep into how this is actually constructed because it is paid pattern, but the construction is really interesting. It's not how like your traditional basic sweater starts. You know, like a very basic beginner level sweater is kind of like a round yoke and then you separate the sleeves and then you knit the body. This does have some, little, little, little. this does have short row shaping. It has different kinds of increases. It has knitting flat, knitting in the round. It has basically every way that you can knit a top down sweater. It's all going on in here. 
So would I recommend it as a very first beginner sweater pattern? Absolutely not. It's definitely a little bit complicated. When I first started working on this, I did have to rip it back quite a few times as I was learning how to do the increases properly. Um, and that's kind of on me for just choosing a pattern, not at random. I chose it because I like it, but it was maybe a little ambitious for where I was as a knitter at that time. So let's talk about the like one and only modification that I did on this very first sweater. And it has to do with all of that ripping back that I did. On the top rib section, you can see it does the increases from the very center front. And the increases that are called for in the pattern, I just could not get the hang of. Like it just didn't work for me. I tried it so many times and I had to keep ripping it back. And it was really frustrating for me at the time because I wasn't used to doing that or I wasn't used to having to like troubleshoot my knitting. And instead of just like knitting a swatch and trying it that way to figure out the increases, I just kept restarting the entire project. So little bit of stubbornness on my part, but eventually I did just change the increases. So I've never been able to do the actual increases that they call for and have it look really nice on that center panel. So instead I just do a make one right, make one left instead of the called for increases. And it accomplishes the same goal. And that's the only thing that I changed on this version. So first I wanna talk about the things that I really like about this first version, and then I'm gonna get into the things that I don't like quite so much. So the things that I really like are the neckline. The neckline is the thing that drew me to this pattern in the first place. It's why I have knit it so many times. I really think it's very pretty. I think it's flattering. And I think that it just like adds a lot more oomph than like a traditional, normal, just like ribbed neckline. And I really like patterns, or I really like to wear sweaters that are kind of simple. Like I really like them to be all one color or not all that complicated, um, like very easy to wear, but with something that makes them a little bit special. So I really thought that this neckline and like the shoulder increases really accomplished what I wanted it to do by being like a basic throw on everyday sweater that wasn't just a plain sweater. On this white version, I love how the neckline sits basically all the way out to the shoulders and it does look, and I think that's kind of like the goal, <laughs> like it's supposed to kind of come out to your shoulders and down in the front and I think that's like, I think it looks so pretty, I think it's very flattering, I really like how it looks like on me. And that is really why I've knit this so many times because I just think that the like neckline and the upper body is just really flattering. It's like a little bit sporty, but not, I don't know. It just like, it really works for me. But there are a couple of things with this version that I didn't really like and is why I've knitted a couple times since. The first is absolutely my fault and that's yarn choice, baby. I messed up. I won't say that I messed up big time because it's not the end of the world. I still wear this sweater and I do wear it fairly regularly, but I would wear it a whole lot more if I didn't knit it in this yarn. <laughs> I knit this sweater in Wool and the Gang's shiny happy cotton in whatever, the, it, I'm sure it has a different name, but it's just a plain white. Now this is a lovely cotton yarn. It is so nice. It's so soft. This has been washed a few times. It's really held up. It hasn't pilled at all. It's very nice. This is not like your like peaches and cream kind of nubby dishwashing cotton. This is like a really nice cotton yarn. And I believe it is the correct like yarn weight for the pattern, worsted or whatever it whatever it calls for, that, which is why I chose that particular yarn. I had enough of it and it was the appropriate size. However, it is so heavy. It is like physically a very heavy sweater. It is like dense. Because it's so heavy, because cotton is like, it's so much heavier than wool, or mm, I shouldn't say that. Depending on what yarn you're using, you can have a lightweight cotton, you can have a heavyweight wool. However, this particular sweater, it's like physically heavy to pick up. It like weighs as much as this work in progress sweater in the bag with all of the yarn and like notions and everything. 
The reason why that weight really doesn't work for me is because I knit this in white with cotton yarn with the idea that it would be like a really nice springtime sweater, but it's just too heavy for me to wear during warmer months. Like it, it is quite, it's like quite insulating. It's just warmer than I wanted it to be. The other problem with the weight is that it pulls on the sweater. So as I'm wearing it, I can literally like feel it growing around me. It's already got a lot of ease. It does not need to be growing at all as I wear it. So the weight is kind of working against it. The other couple of things that I didn't really like about how my finished version turned out is that the arm side or where like the armhole is on the pattern version is quite a lot lower than I expected it. And even though like looking at the pictures now, it's very obvious that that's how it's supposed to wear. But I just like, I guess I just didn't really think it through before I got started with it. Where my actual like armpit is and where the armpit of the sweater is, there's a pretty significant difference. And because of that, if you pull up your arm, like if you raise your arm, you raise the bottom of the sweater a lot. And with a kind of more cropped length on this, the actual like body of the sweater, if this is the armpit, this is how long the body is. So it can really like hike up there if you're moving your arms a lot. And then the last thing that doesn't necessarily bother me, but kind of, it's like hindsight 2020, right? Like I wish that I had adjusted at the point of knitting, but I don't dislike it enough to rip back and redo it. That is the sleeves. They are quite narrow and I just, I typically prefer my sleeves not to be quite so tight on the arm. That's just a personal preference thing. I should have just tried it on as I was going and not done as many decreases, but I just followed the pattern as is. And it does fit and I think that it looks nice. I think that you kind of need that tighter arm to work with how, um, how much ease I have on the body portion of the sweater. However, just like in my day-to-day -day comfort levels, I don't tend to go for sleeves that are quite so tight. So with all of that in mind, I was like done with the sweater, gave it a nice long rest, but I knew that I wanted another version that fit a little bit more narrow to the body, didn't have quite so much positive ease, fixed the like armpit problem and the sleeve problem, which is how we got this boy. So yarn first. This is Lion Brand Yarn Jeans in the color Top Stitch. It is an acrylic yarn, which I have not used for sweaters before, but it's surprisingly nice feeling. I know there's a lot of big feelings when it comes to acrylic yarn, and in general, I would say that I don't favor acrylic yarn. However, the sweater was ultimately very cheap to make, and it's gone through the washing machine a couple of times and looks absolutely fine. And as far as acrylics go, it's quite soft. It's soft to the touch, doesn't feel like that like sticky plasticky feel, and in general like I get quite a good amount of wear out of this sweater and I think that's from the yarn choice. So for this version of the sweater I came in and I was like needs to be more narrow, gotta get that armpit way closer to my armpit, cannot have tight sleeves. So that was what I was going for when I set out to knit this pattern and I was like I'm gonna mod the absolute heck out of it. I will put it in lifelines however often I have to so I can rip back as much as I need to like get this to where I want it to be. And so I did. So for this version I sized down the needles. I think it calls for, in the actual pattern it calls for an 8 for the ribbing and a US 10 for the body. I just used an 8 throughout. The actual fabric of the body of this sweater is just a little bit tighter and I prefer how that looks. I knit most of the upper body in the pattern as it's described. So I knit like the whole ribbed section. I went through like a lot of the shoulder increases. I followed the pattern until it has you start working on like the sleeves and at some points it has you work flat. So I knew I didn't want to work flat. I just like didn't want to mess around with it. 
and I wanted to have a seamless sleeve without having to pick up stitches all the way around. So what I did is I just worked in the round and continued doing increases on the shoulder line as it was described in the pattern until I felt like it was wide enough for my arms and my body. At that point, I tried it on just to make sure that it would actually fit like my arms and my body, and I separated for the sleeves to knit the body in the round. Now, one thing that I do wish that I had done on this version is to knit it a little bit bigger. It's like right at the edge of being a little bit too close to the body for my tastes. It's just personal preference. It's like arguably got a little bit of negative ease around the bust, depending on like what bra I wear, but um, it's basically got no ease through the chest and then a little bit of ease through the body because I didn't do any waist shaping. Typically in my sweaters, I like a little bit of positive ease throughout just for my own comfort and I just prefer that. So I separate the sleeves, I knit the body, and I just kept trying it on until it got to the point where I felt like it was ready to start for the ribbing. And on this version, what I did was I matched the length of the ribbing to how wide the ribbing was for the neckline. So it has a nice, quite thick ribbing on the bottom for the hem. I think it looks really nice. I'm so glad that I did that, even though it took forever, but it's super worth it. I think that it looks really nice on the end product. Then for the sleeves, I got the live stitches, picked those back up, picked up the underarm stitches, and then knit completely straight for a little bit, basically up to the elbow. And then I started doing increases to get a nice poofy sleeve. If you want to get a big puffy sleeve on like any garment, all you have to do is start doing increases. I actually looks like I started doing increases at like if this is my elbow, I started doing increases around here, increased up the sleeve length is kind of like mid hand um, before the ribbing. And then you decrease super quickly before the actual ribbing. So I think you just, you knit two together the whole way around and then you do the ribbing to make it have this nice poofy sleeve. And that is chica number two. And you may be asking yourself, Allison, if you've knit it twice, why would you knit it thrice? <laughs> but I still had some things that I wanted to change and I really wanted to use this yarn. So this, obviously not complete yet, is my third go at the Chica pattern. So yarn first, let me pull it out. I don't have my labels. What a shame, I usually do. Okay, so I have one strand of alpaca boucle yarn and one strand of fingering weight, I think it's an alpaca and wool mix, but I will put the details on the screen so you know what we're working with. So I got this alpaca blue, blah, blah, blah. I got this alpaca boucle yarn when it was on sale from Webs, and I was like, need to use that, have to use that, like I wanted it. So I got the alpaca boucle and I tried to knit a couple swatches with like different size needles and basically felt like I couldn't work with it because it is, it's kind of like mohair in that it's yarn that's kind of twisted around a core, um, but I found it really quite difficult to work with and it wasn't really holding its shape at all. It was just like mush in my hands. So I basically knew I was never going to use it on its own. It had to be paired with something else. So I got fingering weight yarn that could work with it that was pretty close in color but not exactly so that I would get a little bit of like a heathered look to my finished garment. And that is what we have here. I will try to do a close-up so you can get the texture of this but it is delightful. It is so soft. It's so squishy. It's um the actual fabric kind of reminds me of like terry cloth. Like it's not um, super sleek looking, it's very like nubby. I kind of thought that it was going to end up looking more like that Sherpa fabric or like Teddy fabric. Um, it's definitely a little bit more like terry cloth, but it is 
just unbelievably soft. Next to Skin Soft, it's just, I mean, so, so nice. So kind of like this pattern, but even more so, this guy is like way off the rails. So what I did was I followed the pattern as written up to the end of the ribbed portion of the neckline and stopped following the pattern from there. So after completing the ribbed portion of the neckline, essentially what I did was did a little bit of math and figured out where I would want to place some raglan increases. So this, instead of having the shoulder increase details that the other two have, it's completely gone off and it's doing raglan increases instead. So I figured out where I wanted my raglan stitches to be, and then I did short rows, essentially from like the shoulder down to the point of the neckline to re-emphasize that it's kind of like a V and obviously it like raises the back neckline, lowers the front a little bit. The short rows gotta happen. So I did my short rows and my raglan increases at the same time and then continued the raglan until I felt like it was wide enough to fit my arms and my body again. And then the same kind of deal for this. I just tried it on, made sure that it's gonna fit, it is a little bit looser than this one, which was intended, and I am working now on the body. And for this version, I am knitting the body in size US 9 needles, and then I believe I did the ribbing in the 8. For the body on this, and it's not something that I've done on either one of these other Trika versions, I am doing at the very center of the armpit is a row of pearls. So this is going to be pearls all the way down the side of the body, which essentially is going to just make a little channel. And then when I'm done with the sweater, I'm going to sew that up to kind of give it a little bit more structure because this is alpaca yarn. I have heard, I've never used alpaca yarn before, but I've heard that it doesn't have great memory. And because my first version does kind of stretch out as I wear it, I didn't want to repeat that problem. So I'm adding this in so that I continue to knit it in the round. I don't have to knit it flat, but it adds that seam in for stability. And I think what I'm gonna do is sew that seam in like a wool reinforcement thread instead of using the same yarn because just so it's stronger. And I think what I'm going to do for the arms on this version is the same thing. So it's gonna have a line of pearls up that I'm going to sew, which will basically give it like a false seam up the arm and down the side of the body. And for these sleeves, obviously I haven't started them yet, but what I'm thinking I'm going to do is not to replicate this big poofy sleeve, but do kind of just like a straight sleeve. So it's not gonna be particularly narrow. And I will probably have it be either like bracelet length or three quarter length because that is just a more wearable sweater arm length for me. I find that when I have longer sweaters, I just kind of push them up anyway. So I might as well just knit it to the right length. For this sweater, because it is like so cozy and gushy, it has a little bit more ease than this uh, orange version. I think, I don't know, I can't decide on how long I want it to be. Because on one hand, I think maybe a little bit long, like to kind of go for it so that it's just like an ultimate cushy, cozy, like sit inside on a Saturday kind of sweater, or maybe to do it a little bit cropped because I feel like it gives off kind of a sporty vibe. Like, I don't know if that translates at all, but I just get like a sporty-ish vibe from this. And because it reminds me a little bit of terry cloth, I think that that reinforces the kind of sportiness. So do I want it to be a little bit more sporty and maybe be a little bit cropped? I haven't decided yet, but I will be working on finishing this. I can't guarantee that it will happen anytime soon, but I can guarantee that when I do finish it, I will put it up on my Instagram, which is Cypress Street Crafts. It's cypress.street.crafts on Instagram, and you can find it there. But that is all I had to say about the Chica sweater pattern. Let me know in the comments below if you have knit this too, if you're looking to knit it. Just let me know your thoughts and I will see you soon.